Okay, so here we are on boxofit.com's Minecraft server, and uh, I've been working on some aqueducts. Everything you see here was done quick and easy in less than an hour, and uh, it respects the water physics, by which I mean everything that you see is one flowing block of water. Um, the problem with doing this quick and easy is it's very, very easy to uh, break the rules. Because we're playing by water physics, we have to respect a few very, very, very stringent rules. Number one being that water runs downhill, and number two, that water will only run seven blocks from its source, boom, before it does just that. It reaches the end of its run. So unfortunately, because I didn't want a bunch of drips coming down on me while I built this, I, uh, you know, didn't have the water going as I built, I made one mistake right there. That archway is one block wider than all of the others, and that pattern will basically mess up all of this. So um, what I'm going to do here is take the opportunity to teach you guys um, how to do aqueducts from this. Um, basically, all we have to know... Uh, hold on. I'm set zero. Okay. Good. Good. All we have to know is what we're doing, and I always work from the center out to the sides. Um, and from the top of the hill down, because that's really the only way to do it. So let's assume that this tree here were the top of our hill. This is our first slot in an aqueduct. So this would be this little section right here, from here to here. Alright? So, it's up against the mountain, which shall be illustrated by sand. Okay. And that counts as our first block. So what we want to do is count 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright? 7, 7. See, this is how it's easy to get messed up. Seven blocks, because the water will only run seven blocks from its source. So seven blocks. So if we count them, it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. All right. So from here, we're going to make a row underneath of that. And this is when I start the eights. I start at one, which is that row I just put. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, it's pretty much self explanatory from there. Good. Rain. Peaceful. I like it. Um, okay. So, we're going to go in and fill all of this out. Now, a lot of people would argue that this row here, the one, isn't very important because you know, the water doesn't contact it. And I agree with 90% of that sentiment, that the water doesn't contact it. However, the reason it's important is because I use that as the middle point when I'm making the arches that would, in, you know, standard Roman architecture, actually support the aqueduct. So this is our uh, run here. And if we put in a thing of water, we'll notice a great thing about water physics. Water is lazy. Water is going to take the shortest point to get downhill that it possibly can. So, we know now that we absolutely have to fence this in. 
Now I always come one block over, and I'll demonstrate why here in just a second. Okay. Alright, to illustrate why I will leave this one not like that. Sorry, it's going to bug me if I don't remember. Okay. So, now we can just throw in our water block, and that one water block continues through and populates all the rest of them. Now that brings us to the question, why did I go one more than I had to? And simply put, yeah, it's going to be really hard to do. That. That is why. Because if you don't, you can see water above the top of the walls, which, you know, if this weren't Minecraft, should be physically impossible. And uh, additionally, if we're one past, we can just go ahead and uh, bar this off to keep people from taking boats down the aqueduct. Um, for anyone who does not know, goodbye sheep. The reason we can't just put the bars across the way here is because even though the bars uh, are not full blocks, they still take up a full block of space, so uh, nothing gets through them. Um, if you work in this manner, uh, you'll be able to, assuming you don't mess up like I did, um, travel seven blocks for every one block that you are tall. Um, this is important because if you're up at cloud level or just above, like where the top of that tree is, that's about 80 blocks from sea level. That means you can move one water block, 560 blocks, um, to the side. Now this is great if you're playing without cheating. Now an aqueduct seems like a horrible, horrible, complicated thing to have to build in survival mode, but it's really not that bad. Because um, you end up with so much like excess amounts of cobble that you can just whip it together out of cobble, or go ahead, find a jungle if you want, because there's tons of wood, burn and make yourself some charcoal, or you know use buckets of lava in a furnace to make... Uh, stone blocks that you can then uh, press into stone bricks um, and what you'll end up with is a ton of material that you really don't have anything else to do with you've already built your castle you've already built your fortress of doom your armory and everything else that you're interested in so you can build this aqueduct in a survival mode pretty easily and even more easily if you have help um, and that's one of the benefits of being on a server like this is um, I could easily reach out to Davey or Arthur or Tom or whomever is playing and say, hey, do you have anything better to do than help me, you know, rebuild Rome in a day? Um, and what they'll do um, is help you move water a very, very, very far distance. And do you have buckets? Yes. Can you sit there and build like most people would? one block here, one block here, and then voila, your third block is automatically populated. Yes, you can, and I'm not going to tell you that that system is bad, because that system is actually better. But do you end up with something really cool looking? No. Are you respecting the laws of physics? Eh, no, not so much. Um, but still in all, um, it's a great project for anyone who wants that sort of Roman look. Uh, it's nice and functional. Um, really truthfully minimal materials required and they have a great aesthetic to them as well um, I like them because underneath here in what I call the dripway because of that um, you can use this as basically a covered road in a giant uh, castle town you can do pretty much anything with it you want it's a great great build um, it's fun by yourself even better in a team it's a little frustrating when you start to get so fast that you're careless because you will end up with that, which is just blooming sad.